Okay, everyone, forward. welcome. We are here for the first Dyer game team back. of Brunel versus Oxford. I am Max is on fire. Hopefully, right now, I'm going to be joined here by Henry. Can you hear me? Just about. I'm hearing you in game, so I'm just changing the the sound, Radiant but it should be good now. Back. Okay. All right, so we're already already a little bit into the draft. So, the Enchantress Dyer being one of the first back. bands from. Brunel, we kind of see this pop in and out of the first ban phase, and if it's not in the first picks or bans, it seems to get completely ignored. So Enchantress is in kind of a Radiant weird place at the moment, but um, the amount that that can do either as a three or a four position, I think, pretty much justifies it. But the Earth Spirit, the OD, the Lone Druid, also banned, has left Death Prophet in the pool, which hasn't been picked up in the first phase or banned in the second. Do you think either team is going to want to look for a look for a death profit here? Yeah, I think could work quite well with Brunel. I mean, they've got their offlane and support. I think they've sort of opened with quite a strong um, opening. They'll probably look to pick Dyer it up in the next two, I think. Maybe everyone's just forgotten about it, you never know sometimes. There's just too many of these heroes, this patch. that are always sort of question marks, what do I ban, who do I ban? But I think, um, you know, it should be, should be quite a good game, this. The... Abaddon though, one of the better heroes against the Death Prophet I think, or just maybe that the Death Prophet sucks against the Abaddon more than anything. Sven stands ready. Yeah. Oh, Sven. Yeah, so this hero has been played so much recently. Just that armor for your whole team as well as the fact you can just take the stacks really, really early. Yep. Get that farm out of control. Really strong, really good against the uh, Witch Doctor ulti as well, reducing a lot of the damage coming from that. Yeah, and with the max cleave and like the level, I guess, two god strength at, you know, 15, 16 minutes in maybe. I don't know if there's another carry that can do that much damage at that stage in the game. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a crazy one, especially with the initiation he gives as well. Like very few carries still can farm that fast and that, um, that well and then still be able to be the initiator for the team. Yeah, so Death Prophet will actually get picked up by the... Uh, by the Oxford side, so they're happy to run the Death Prophet and the Invoker side by side here. Which one of these do you think they want to put safe lane and which one mid? This is quite an interesting one, isn't it? I think yeah, uh, I think probably serious. what they'll they'll probably do is is uh, put Death Prophet mid because she's so ridiculous now with that that third spell, the Spirit Siphon. Pure damage, percentage based, so it scales. Slow works in fog. Charge based, you know what? A, what a hero, boys. Yeah. But um, it's yeah, I think okay. it'll. Yeah, I mean, Radiant it's really going to be invoker safe lane, and they might even look to go aggressive actually, um, and just sort of have that sun strike for extra kill potential in the top lane. Like this Abaddon could be a core. We just don't know. Yeah, I suspect that the Abaddon will be the will be a core here, probably going into the off lane. I've not really been seeing any. Support Abaddon. It's mostly been Five in the off lane. I know the um, the Warwick team that won the super successful King of the North tournament um, ran the Abaddon. I think every game that they played in the qualifiers as the off laner, and then in their single game at the live event as well. Um, and obviously they won six out of six games or whatever it was with that. Not a bad percentage, that is it. <laughs> That's like. Remaining. I don't know. All the percent. I'm not sure. Yeah, how many all of all of all really? of the the hundred. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's one of those ones that sort of has started in a pub, and the cancer has sort of grown into the scene a bit more, especially in um, sort of not not top tier Dota as such. But I think it's definitely one of these ones that is really really frustrating to play against, just because you can be so aggressive with it <laughs> and just be running around with effectively. Um, a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, not having to worry about a lot of what the other team have got to give. Yeah, I feel like, so there are always these heroes which are picked a lot in pubs, but don't necessarily break through to the like the pro or the competitive scene. But there are a couple or like two or three which, even though they're not kind of standards in the pro scene, kind of like should be appearing more if oh. like. 5k players are getting a 60% win rate in their games with Omni Knight, with Abaddon, on like 56% with Spectre. That's not just, you know, 
pub stomped. All the players in those games should be good, right? They shouldn't just get stomped by something that they don't know how to play against every single game. Um, and Abaddon, kind of one of those. So, so yeah, I think should, it's, it's should just kind one of be breaking them. through in some way. Yeah, I think it's just, it all depends on how the team works. And it, it does look like they're probably going to do this probably aggro dual lane with maybe spirit breaker charging into the mid trying to try and work with that cold snap against the, the queen of pain yep queen of pain could be good though I, I, I like i like brunel's draft it's a lot of synergy you know um i think like especially with the aa blast you've got the swap out if in case like someone does accidentally get caught in the chrono with teammate queen of pain ulti and obviously the cleave if if someone's caught right on the edge of it you can just cleave into everyone inside if they're quite close so i think it all depends on how the laning stage goes because um oxford have got a really really strong laning stage and then if they can transition that into just a a snowball lineup and roll over Brunel or if, oh my or if Brunel Lord. can come back. It's Savage Cabbage causes Ravage. I've played in a pub match with this guy and he was absolutely cancerous. So Jesus. so cancerous. Like shots fired. Reported Jesus. reported and muted cancerous, like <laughs> flaming people in all chat. And then I was like but but you're the same MMR as us. How can you be complaining about people being worse than you? And then he said, right. get this. He said, I'm only at this MMR because of guys like you dragging me down. I kid you not. <laughs> Mate, you're fired. I mean, it's as simple as that. Fucking fired. You've you seen, you seen Shanghai? You're fired, mate. So fired. Sweet oh, Jesus. All right, so I'm siding with now, Brunel. Now that's out of the way. Brunel going to win. Into the game. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Brunel to win, yeah? Is that your prediction or is there no bias in that whatsoever? There is definitely bias in that. Um, I actually do prefer the draft of Oxford, but whatever. Savage Cabbage causes Ravage, get out of here. Um, so I will go through the Oxford team. First we have China Dota is dead on Spirit Breaker. Uh, Headless Ned on the Abaddon. Unknown Characters on the Death Prophet. Waffle Frisbee. On the Witch Doctor and Savage Cabbage, Savage Cabbage causes Ravage. On the Invoker, your best mate. Um, over on the dial, we've got J.K. Captain of uh, Brunel on the Sven. Uh, you all suck on the Queen of Pain mid. Uh, best B. Uh, I don't even know how to say that. B B three P R first on the Venge. Chug Pussy Hail Whiskey seconds, Eat Satan question mark on the AA and uh, at Darren Ong or O N G G on the void. Okay, so both teams largely going for the top rune here. Uh, who do you think's got the better level one fight? I feel like if this breaks out, it should probably go to Oxford, and I wouldn't be surprised if they get a kill out of it as well. Yeah, this is a really scary thing for Oxford right uh, for Brunel right now. That early ward that Spirit Breaker set up. Oh, oh the no, cast. The Coconut is bouncing through the soul cycle comes out and the stun was an attempt by Sven but it wasn't enough and Abaddon gets the first blood. Oh dear. And uh, Invoker got the, the rune bounty rune bottom as well. So it, is, it looks like to be this setup that we thought uh, off lane, dual lane, uh, Death Prophet mid, Invoker safe lane, really rush that hand of Midas and send them sun strikes across the globe. Yep. So the aggressive lane with the Abaddon and the Witch Doctor in theory um, oh, excuse me one second <clears throat> in theory you shouldn't care too much if Abaddon gets that first blood but um, like in theory it should be better than the mid lane again in it but I'm not entirely convinced Abaddon probably gonna be trouble in this top lane Spirit Breaker getting right in Void's face but So a nice uh, early Bazzy though on the Abaddon, so now no need to worry about mana. Spam spam out that shield, give them a real nightmare in lane. But they're, they're doing, looks like, I uh, wonder if they're going to be able to deward this ward actually. Do they have any sentries on anybody? No. So Bruno don't have any sentries, so they're going to have so much vision here, Oxford, um, to know exactly how aggressive they can be even before this level 6 on the Abaddon. So Death Prophet trying to do as much damage as possible to the Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain just does not want to blink away, wants to take half of her health in damage rather than just blink away from that. That was unfortunate. 
Yeah, that's quite interesting. That's uh, a lot of damage from that Spirit Siphon. Even, even early on with the level level two, it's still just so much damage along with the side. Oh, oh Abaddon finds a kill. Is he going to get another one here? Trying to get the witch doctor. I don't think he gets yeah, he the stand. Is. Oh, oh, not oh, quite. The shield. Oh, the sun strike. Sun strike was an attempt, but a little bit off. Yeah, I think. Uh, Brunel damage. were trying to get revenge there, but it didn't work out for him at all. Death Prophet had a, a cell, but Queen of Pain, I don't think it ever brought one out. He's bringing one out now, just so she can maybe stay in this lane, but... Things not going so well for Brunel at this particular moment. Um, Sven is getting a little bit of farm, but Queen of Pain is just getting absolutely wrecked at the moment. 3-2 to two compared to the 10-1. and one. On the Death Prophet. Hopefully, when she gets the bottle and gets maybe a little bit ahead, can get some burst damage onto the Death Prophet and maybe find a kill. But maybe that's the way back in, but right now, we're losing quite heavily. Yeah, so, Invoker's just got a free lane here, really. It's quite difficult for the, uh, the Void to do much, especially with this Forge Spirit now. Great fun. A lot of armor. Not too much now, but. Later on, real nightmare, especially for us support players, trying to get rid of that. Absolute nightmare. But free farming away, I'm guessing he's he's got his ring of protection getting into the the Bazzi. So there's two Bazzies on Exford, but um, looking probably to get that Midas really early on and just keep this free farming up bottom, creating pressure across the map. Yeah, the uh, wave pull pushed all the way up into under Void's tower and then Invoker just walks under and gets some denies. So. Yeah, he's crushing. He's yeah. crushing bottom. Look, he's 13 and 7 compared to the 4 and 1 Although on the not, uh, on the void. Not really zoning the void out at all. Void is pretty much um, eat what he is even on XP. So ideally, you want to push the off lane around. This is going to be a level six void. In not very many minutes in. Chronosphere, not the most useful spell. Super super early game. Obviously, you need some other people to find some levels and some items to do a little bit of damage into the Chrono. But still. Getting these levels, he's probably going to be reasonably happy with. Top yeah, lane, I mean, it's always a trade off. Oh dear. Top lane. I already feel really horrible for Bruno. This what is do you do against this Abaddon? The Abaddon, yeah. It's just, just. True, suffering. Hi guys. I'm here. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, uh, Spirit Breaker's kind of roamed up top now. He's kind of just sort of. Not really doing anything at the minute. I think he could probably charge the Queen of Pain mid, to be honest, and uh, combo up with this. Plane. Yeah, oh, she blinked this time. Um, <laughs> and a charge. A charge whilst the uh, Spirit Siphon is down would almost certainly kill the Queen of Pain. But there's a smoke coming out from the supports now, but there's no way that Death Prophet isn't going to notice this. No way at all that this gank is going to work. They get the ward up on the high ground. I don't want to. Oh, smoke and a ward. Yeah, I mean the the death prophet. It's quite obvious, point, isn't yeah. it? I think they might have even smoked under the ward because um, I didn't see where they smoked actually, but they they might have smoked under the ward. So, um, well played by Death Prophet, just standing back, don't get ganked. The inner stage is going super well for Oxford. No need to try and change it up too much. Yeah. Spirit Breaker has made his way over to mid. Queen of Pain should have seen this, so should be ready to blink away at a short notice. Unfortunately, Spirit Breaker obviously super super tanky. If there was a slightly easier to kill hero ganking her, maybe she'd be able to take him out. But five armor and eight hundred health on the Spirit Breaker. He's still waiting a long time for the charge. I don't know where he's looking on the map. He's looking top. We could probably have got the Queen of Pain there, but now Abaddon taking a little bit of damage. The cast bouncing through the Witch Doctor. Spirit Breaker is choosing AA as his target here. The Sun Strike will not quite connect. Sven gets a nice double stun onto two, but. Look at this, nobody takes damage. Witch Doctor, level 1 heal, and Abaddon shield, nobody took any damage through all of that. My god. And now a charge going out mid lane. Charge going mid, yeah. And Queen of Pain, very, very low on mana. Yeah, yeah this is very some, scary. You have to be some lucky bashers. Oh no, but now the Queen of Pain has blinked over to the rune. Does have the fairy fire, the Sunstrike is here as well. Oh, does connect to the oh, bottom, and there's a bash, just to make sure. Smashes the Queen of Pain out of the Morsel Realm and 20 seconds off the map. 
Yeah, this is really good for Oxford at the minute. I think um, I'm surprised actually top lane hasn't gone as bad as I originally thought. Like, I think uh, they're not getting as much farm, obviously, but they're still doing not too bad of a job, to be honest. Um, the only worry is that you've got these supports that are sort of a bit under-leveled in comparison. I mean, Spirit Break is level 4 and so is the Witch Doctor in comparison to... It's only level 3 and 3 on the AA but and the Venge, but you really want that level 6 on the AA as soon as you can to try and tie it up with that Chronosphere, because that's how they're going to start winning these team fights if they're behind Charles in farm. Straight into the tower, no fear whatsoever, and it's potentially a shield going onto the Spirit Breaker, so it does get popped straight away, but Sven now taking quite a bit of damage to Sunstrike will finish off the Venge. What level is that Sunstrike already? That is doing a lot of damage, so that's four points up in Exor. 287.5. Pure damage, and he's on the other side of the map. But I love it. But that was really well played by Oxford. Just create the pressure, start using this Spirit Breaker now. He's got the, the second level in charge a little bit faster and the longest stun duration. Really works out really well with the uh, Thun Strike. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. In another ward up, looking to charge mid potentially. Queen of Pain is hanging around here, wanting to dive onto the Death Prophet, does have enough damage with both of her spells if she can get in range, but needs to be careful with the Spirit Breaker is nearby. Now the charge is coming out. Hopefully Queen of Pain sees this before she commits, and now the silence goes out. Oh, she's not going to be able to finish off the Death Prophet, the Fairy Fire Eaten even. Well, Sven there as well. Now Sven, hi guys, I'm here, doing nothing. <laughs> War cry. Yeah. That was really unlucky, actually, because it was just a, she was just about. Although oh, she, no, she did die. Is going to be going down top lane. Tries for a TP away. Needs one more attack. Oh no! He TP's oh, no! onto the spot. That's so unfortunate. Oh dear, that's not the mis not the misclick he was hoping for. He was to pick a misclick in this game, and now Witch Doctor being punched up by the void. The stun will come out from the spread, and he will manage to chain that up enough so he can find a kill into the mid lane, they have to commit the, both the safe laner and the off laner to the mid, but they do get one and now Venge is going to be almost certainly going down top. Queen of Pain has moved up here, doesn't have the slow onto the Spirit Breaker yet, could link after this in a second and should be able to finish off the Spirit Breaker, yeah, gets it with a scream. There is no ultimate on the Abaddon, but he's just doing such ridiculous amounts of damage, getting the lifesteal as well, Queen of Pain two seconds until the blink, Abaddon doesn't have a point in the queue, so... Can't really chase any further to get that extra new card. Bot lane attack. now. Invoker. Dyer's structures are fortified. Pushing down the tower. Oi turns up, but he can't really do anything about this. Probably gonna try and get the deny here, but. Yeah, this invoker is getting really, really scary now. 55 last hits, nine minutes in with a hand of Midas. Yeah, five K you know. net worth already. Yeah, he's always got a he's got a level a minute at the minute, and this is just going to get even more scary when you start getting that really high level invoker where he's just, he's not even an exhaust anymore. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Played by the AA, they chase this not at the minute. Don't really have that much initiation apart from if if Queen of Pain blinks or that now short range faces void jump. Or mid right now. I don't know if they're looking for a smoke here. There is one up on the Venge, but not using it just yet. They are going to pop it. Sven doesn't want to be there. And I guess the target for this must be the Invoker. Dyer's top tower is under they're moving attack. into the jungle to get some more wards out. The smoke for wards. Fluff and stuff style. And that's actually looks like that looks like it's it. They're just smoking to place a ward and make sure they don't get picked off by the Spirit Breaker in the meantime. Obviously the global presence of the Spirit Breaker in the Sunstrike is scary, but using the smokes to get the get the wards out it's gonna be hard. Charge coming through on Queen of Pain mid. Great silence by the Death Prophet and Sunstrike. Oh, the creeps tank a lot of it, but it still goes down. Not looking good for Queen of Pain right now. Yeah, I'm in a very very Dyer's difficult lane. Is under attack. Queen of Pain found the one kill. Even had the regen rune. Honor there, but just couldn't escape to get it off. I was going top now onto the AA, still level 4, yeah. straight past the Venge. Bastard from our Spirit Breaker is kind of low, doesn't have the mana for a nether, nether strike right now, or whatever it's called. Venge being chased into the trees, the Malady well, won't be enough to tick down, and will the courier go down to the tower here? I think it will. Yep, okay, that's that. Nothing on the courier. Oh, brave, nice. Three man, 
ulti instantly takes out the Spirit Breaker, and they should be able to get another two from this. Uh, Sven pops out the ult, Queen of Pain, two seconds until a blink to try and slow down the Abaddon. Has the region right, blinked off. But that was really good for yeah. turning that around under the tower. That was very nice. Yep, and the... Oh, pops the regen rune. Can they kill this guy? They know he's got no ultimate now. Yep, they should be able to find the burst oh. damage here. Doesn't have any mana either. They've got stick charges in just a second. But... Oh, and oh, Nice the AOT, chrono. No. So they, they will be able him. to lock him down with the... Do they have any protection? Afterwards. Oh, I don't think they realise that he's stunned, so they don't have any AoE left to get him and no detection. The Ghost Walk saves oh, the the him. And one more. Queen of Pain. Oh no, Queen of Pain blinks behind the supports and now all three of them are going to get stunned up. Nether Strike goes out, finishes out the face void, and now this is going to be a massacre up here. The Coconut is bouncing through, the Death Ward is channeled, they take out the AA, they're trying to find the Queen of Pain. She should be able to blink just far enough away. My god, that looked so good. The Sun Strike will be enough even Dyer's if it does hit, but that looked top. really, really good for Brunel, but he stuck around a little bit too long. Invoker didn't go down. Coconut and everything else. Yeah, that was really close. Unfortunately, they caught the uh, Queen of Pain in the in the uh, Chronosphere, I think. And you know that extra that extra 300 damage from the uh, Scream of Pain would have been enough. Would have probably been enough to get him down and try and get out as soon as you can. But uh, well played by Oxford chasing him down. This is one of the scary things about their lineup. As soon as that Abaddon hits you once with the Curse of Avernus and Phase Boots and all the Venom, you know. You're, you're, you're having a real tough time trying to get out of that, even with the Sven, the Sven uh, war cry. Yeah. Queen just so, so far behind. 3.6k net worth. Um, not much more than half Dyer's of what the invoke is on right now. Sunday Should be able to find a kill with the spirit break again, but he's got a DD. Queen of Pain just sitting still, waiting for the sun strike. Um, she could have got the spirit break there, but I guess didn't know where the rest of the team were, and with the Abaddon coming in behind, didn't want to risk too much void. Couldn't get the time walk over the cliff now. Just goes up instead. There's no chronosphere here, so this Abaddon. Good luck killing that. Really need to get level 6 on this AA at the minute. He's still level 4, 14 minutes in. As soon as they get that, I think they can just really try to pile the pressure on a bit. Even if you don't worry about the uh, Abaddon, because obviously if you get the AA blast on the Abaddon, oh, fight breaking out. Yeah, the sun strike. Full combo goes out onto the Sven. Queen of Pain tries to turn things around with an ult. I don't know if she got any kills with that ult. She just got the Spirit Breaker and now Spirit Siphon is going onto the Void and he gets Silence Force inside the Chrono. And now the Death Prophet and Abaddon chasing two out. Void going to die at the other side of the Death Warden. Four for one and going to turn into a five for one. Death Prophet dives into the tower and won't die to this end. That was team wipe. Yeah. That was uh, that was a little bit ambitious by the Void. He kind of jumped a bit too far in front of his team before the Abaddon had popped the ultimate. So he just sort of stood there and killed the rest of his team while he got a two-man Chrono on the back. And then unfortunately he got picked up afterwards as well. So is the TP right at the front from the Sven? He's going to wisely cancel that, I think. The damage potential from Oxford is kind of through the roof right now. I don't even know if we've seen an exorcism in this game yet. And still, every fight is just a stop. From Oxford, and Queen of Pain getting caught out. The coconut bouncer is not ideal for her there. The stun goes out onto the Abaddon, but now he's back at full health. There's a god strength available on the stem, but he hasn't used it yet. He just doesn't want to turn around and fight here, and he's just going to go down for it. Invoker on a killing spree now, 3 0 and 6. Being involved Spirit in, Breakers in the, on the other side of the fight. Spirit Breaker is charged all the way into the base, gets the ult out into the Queen of Pain. Spirit Breaker will be going down for this, but well Dyer's worth it to create this space and take out the Queen of Pain as well. And now, finally, I think the first exorcism of the game comes Dyer's out. We're almost certainly going to be taking the middle rack with this. There's no buyback on the Queen of Pain, so she's out for the next 15 seconds, and that's plenty of time for the racks to go down. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Dyer's middle are under yeah, he's almost got his level 6. <laughs> way too far really difficult game. for them, yeah. The, um, Dyer's middle has fallen. As we sort of mentioned at the start, it is this snowball from 
from Oxford that we were a little worried about the fact that they can create so much pressure on the on their safe lane, on Brunel's safe lane, as well as yeah. having free farm on the Invoker. Free to get that early at Midas and just create havoc with the Sun Strikes. Like we've seen a good couple of them hit and really sometimes made the difference between a kill just with a Spirit Breaker charge. Um, the defensive trial lane just not really achieving anything at all. Obviously the Avanon got the first blood in the river so that wasn't an ideal start for him but they just didn't seem to be able to do anything at all. Yeah they're looking for a smoke here now so they have got that level 6 the um, Ancient Apparition. We've got the Chronosphere up as well. Can they make something happen here? I think as long as they try and jump in at the back, which it looks like they're trying to do, get this yeah. Death Prophet and Invoker down. Yeah. Oh, oh no! no! The miscommunication there. Venge ends up in the middle of the Chronosphere, and the Chronosphere ends up doing absolutely nothing. Queen of Pain almost dying to the meatball on the side. Uh, Queen will get the ulti out. Hits onto three, but just doesn't achieve anything at all. Death Prophet takes out the void. And Queen of Pain has blinked right, right back. Invoker has already used the Sun Strike. He's going to throw out the Tornado, which is too short to hit the Queen of Pain. Abaddon, all the way on the other side. Sven gets taken down with the help of the Death Ward as well. Invoker still Dyer's hunting for the, for the Queen of Pain. Probably not going to find him at this stage. Now blinks to the side, chopping Spirit Breaker, diving all the way back to the Fountain once again. Gets the Vengeful Spirit, and there's really nothing that anyone can do about this. Queen of Pain has made her way back to the base, the tier 2 goes down. And now the Maelstrom of Hunty Abaddon. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. 28 seconds left on the Exorcism as well, this looks to be a second Rex on this. Uh, can pull off something really amazing without the Chronosphere, 62 seconds on that. So. Yeah, no Chrono, no Queen of Pain ult, which is still only level 1. Queen of Pain only level ben 10. Ben is really so poor as well. Yeah. Helm of Dominator treads. He's gonna try and throw there. everything on the Abaddon here. But he ain't gonna die. Just gonna back off now. The Rex is already gone. Two Rex down at 18 minutes in. Bruno in for a pretty, pretty bad time. Uh, Oxford just gonna back out. They don't wanna risk. Don't wanna risk giving away any of this advantage. Maybe I imagine they might wanna go for a Roshan and go for the. I'll go for the bot lane and get the Roshan on the way, but. GG. That's it. GG, They're yeah. calling it there. Um, pretty Slightly anticlimactic ending, but I think uh, I think that was just one of them games that just snowballs out of control. First blood was really well spouted out by that spirit breaker with the ward, and and then it kind of followed from there. Yeah, not much really to say about that. Um, obviously, there were good plays from the death prophecy. Very much dominated the lane mid. Um, Invoker got some great sun strikes out, Spirit Breaker was creating loads of pressure, so everyone on Oxford pretty much just doing the job exactly as they needed to and led to a very very quick victory for them. This is a best of three so we will be back in a few minutes for the second series, stick around. Doesn't even need to use it, he's just going to go in there. First spirit down, there's the top. Oh, oh, beautiful, beautiful dodge.
screw that guy!